good evening all welcome to this new session we will see imaging in orbits we will see first few trauma cases followed by common orbital pathologies we encounter in routine practice coming to the first case here you can see there is a deformed globe on the right side there is flattening of the globe on right side with free intraocular gas and there is adjacent orbital swelling and soft tissues and there is thickening of the posterior sclera so this is a classical case of global rupture and what is the classical sign you can see in this case is flat tire sign where the orbit mimics the flat tire so what is this flat tire sign we will see this is the flat tire sign so the orbital rupture will mimic the flat tire sign where the collapsed globe is nothing but the flat tire or mushroom appearance there will be presence of intraocular gas or free foreign bodies uh, even thick posterior sclera or sclera discontinuity and hazy outline of the globe so remember flat tire sign in globe rupture this was a case of a punch uh, punch injury to the right eye next uh, this is a case of retinal detachment where you can see there is subretinal hemorrhage and the in retinal detachment the retina the subretinal hemorrhage will mimic the v-shaped appearance because the retina is attached to the optic nerve head so the classical v sign v sign or v sign appearance seen in retinal detachment this is a case of choroidal detachment here you can see this is the choroidal detachment with subchoroidal collection which is nothing but the classical kissing choroid sign this is the other case of choroidal detachment which mimics the baseball sign or baseball appearance so remember v sign appearance in retinal detachment kissing choroid sign in choroidal detachment baseball appearance or sign in choroidal detachment next this is a case of uh, here you can see this is the right lens is in position whereas the left lens there is dislocation this is posterior dislocation of the lens or ectopia lentis so this is seen in all of the following except ellis van creval syndrome so this is uh, nothing but repeated repeated blunt trauma to the head during scissor episodes commonly seen in homocystinuria or hyperlysemia hyperlysemia and other connective tissue disorders like marfan's ehlers danlers and homocystinuria next here you can see this is a case of here you can see this is the case of a choroidal hemorrhage along with there is intraventricular hemorrhage even sdh along the fax and even sh so whenever you see intraocular hemorrhage associated with intracranial hemorrhage remember tarson syndrome so commonly in tarson here also you can see there is vitreous hemorrhage associated with sh so commonly there will be intra intracranial hemorrhage associated with vitreous hemorrhage is referred as tarson syndrome but there can be also subhyoid intraretinal subretinal hemorrhages uh, can be associated in tarson syndrome tarson syndrome is has a poor prognosis and and the neurological prognosis will be poor next here you can see there is orbital blowout fracture here this is orbital blowout fracture even extending into the frontal bones here this is the orbital blowout fracture and here you can see there is herniation of the fat and along with the extraocular muscles into the maxillary sinus so this is classically called as teardrop sign so remember teardrop sign in orbital blowout fracture next here you can see this is the there is dilated superior ophthalmic veins and even the dilated vessels in the cavernous sinus and here you can see this is the typical keratoid cavernous fistula here this is the keratoid cavernous fistula on the left internal keratoid angiography next here this patient uh, has a penetrating injury fifth tree branch he is a young boy here you can see there is a free air or free air or gas adjacent to the orbit and later after three weeks there is orbital cellulitis here you can see there is a hypo intense line like structure surrounded by collection and which is showing peripheral enhancement so this is nothing but the small tree branch which has been retained which is having the secondary infection so unlike metallic and glass foreign bodies wooden foreign bodies usually appear hypotenuating on ct images because of their low attenuation and they can be mistaken for gas so whenever you see uh, a gas like structure or air like structure of low attenuating structures in a orbit with previous history of tree injuries or organic branch injuries definitely suspect wooden foreign bodies next the other few cases we can see this is that there is a sphenoid wing dysplasia and you can see there is herniation of the temporal lobe into the orbit with proptosis and here you can see this is the vrt reconstruction there is this is the typical bare orbit so this is the bare orbit uh, with, with sphenoid wing dysplasia commonly seen in nf1 here this is other case where you can see this is the colobomatous cyst or congenital cystic eye this is the congenital cystic eye or colobomatous cyst and here this is the typical venal lymphatic malformation where there will be multiple fluid fluid levels here you can see there is a multiple fluid fluid levels adjacent to the orbit which is a classical case of venal lymphatic malformation and other common congenital will be congenital cases which mimics a tumor are persistent fetal vasculature and even coats disease this persistent fetal vasculature and coats disease typically mimic retinoblastoma in pediatrically orbital masses 
next case here you can see this is enhancement of the optic now with that center uh, fat stranding here also you can see there is enhancement of the optic now with that sent fat stranding this is a case of a right optic neuritis here this is a case of left optic neuritis and here this is a case of orbital cellulitis with even intraorbital abscess which is extending into the orbital apex along with cavernous sinus thrombosis so which come, comes under Chandler 5 classification here also you can see there is a enhancement along the cavernous sinus which is extending into the orbital apex and even there is a inflammation and denervation of the extraocular muscles so this is a case of toloso hunt syndrome next here also these cases we have commonly seen in covid era where there can be fungal infection from the sinuses extending into the orbits leading to increase intraorbital pressure leading to cone oval shape of the orbits this is classically called as guitar pick sign so normally this is seen in uh, orbital compartmental syndrome or any other causes of raised intraorbital pressure normally the post angle is uh, 180 degrees but here in this will be one less than 120 degrees next here you can see there is a soft tissue density mass with uh, calcifications so this is a case of retinoblastoma this is a case of retinoblastoma this is a case of choroidal osteoma this is a case of choroidal metastasis this was a case of breast carcinoma with choroidal metastasis here you can see this is a case of optic chiasmatic glioma so this is the optic chiasmatic glioma commonly seen in pediatric age group here you can see there is bilateral optic nerve gliomas classically seen in nf1 here you can see there is tram track classification which is seen in optic nerve meningioma which is showing enhancement after contrast here this is a case of orbital schwannoma which is showing target appearance in central necrosis next these are other cases where you can see this is the orbital hemangioma hyperdense on CT and this is hyperintense on T2 this is a case of orbital hemangioma this is a case of dermolipoma or choreastoma here there is a fat containing lesion adjacent to lateral canthus which is suppressed on uh, fat suppressed sequences so this is a case of dermolipoma or choreastoma here this is orbital lymphoma which is hyperdense on CT and even showing intense enhancement in the lateral uh, on the lateral aspect of the orbit in the left eye this is a case of malignant uveal melanomas or choroidal melanomas next here we will see some intraocular gas or silicon gas or scleral buckling commonly used for retinal detachment here this is the intraocular uh, gas, silicon oil which is which ct values are of around 130 this is also intraocular uh, oil which has which is showing chemical shift artifacts at the level of vitreous here the common mimic is orbital hemorrhage so the hu values if it is around 130 definitely suspect uh, silicon oil or intraocular gas orbital hemorrhage will be less than 130 hu here also this is intraocular glass with scleral buckling showing chemical shift artifact and the, this is the oil which is clearly seen on fat suppress sequences sometimes the oil can this intraocular oil can leak extend along the optic now even extending to the intracranial location next this is other case where you can see this is thyroid associated ophthalmopathy there is there is enlargement of the extraocular muscles and there is a bulky extraocular muscles with uh, sparing of the anterior tendon which gives the classical coke bottle sign so remember thyroid of the associated ophthalmopathy here this is a case of uh, orbital pseudotumor where there is thickening of the uh, medial rectus muscle uh, so the, uh, these are commonly referred as non-specific orbital inflammation thank you all